breaking off fear and praying into unmet expectations and where you haven't done something that you're asked to do. And you need to know that this whole conference was a little bit of a risk for us as a church because we've never gone this way as, a, as a, in our internal stuff that we do for our church family. We have been going this way, but to focus a, a week like a conference week on this was a little bit of a gamble. And uh, we we're sort of looking at our numbers and going, well, it's not really greatly attended in terms of some of the other events that we do. But the feedback we've had from you has been absolutely wonderful. So we're working hard at um, putting some things into place to do like maybe a full week next year and to be very more like much more specific and much more focused on different things and trying to be real practical. So if you have any comments uh, that you feel would be helpful for us, uh, if you have any criticisms, uh, I, I wish you had done more of this or I wish you had done less of that and this, uh, please send us an email. And uh, probably the best way to do that is to um, just write to mail at catchthefire.com or write to conferences at catchthefire.com. Either one of those will get to us and we'll be able to get some evaluation. That will be, really appreciate that. How about you stand up, especially those of you at home as well, if you've been watching on the, uh, on the Catch the Fire TV and you've grabbed any of our sessions, make sure you send us a little, uh, hit the email button and just send us a little note right now. That would be great. <coughs> oh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. And Daddy, as we're wrapping up this week, wrapping up what you've been doing here, Father, we need to have like, uh, I just got the, <laughs> got the picture from the, of the Holy Spirit just giving us a nice, gentle push over a cliff <laughs> is the thought that just came. And it was like Daddy with a big smile saying, okay, go. So Father, help us. Be with us. We want to celebrate your goodness. We want to grow just a little bit more even tonight. In Jesus' name. Friends, come on up to the front. There's lots of space up here. Find a spot to connect with God. Uh, if you've never been up to the front, you need to do that at least once before you die. It's not that bad. You can live. You can live. Bless you. Nicole.
just need to lift your voice right about now and just thank the Lord. Just begin to praise him. Just begin to say thank you. Say something. Tell God how good he is. You're amazing, Daddy. Full of light, full of love, full of freedom. You're bigger than we imagined. You're in control. We have a destiny. We're getting to know who we are. Father, we thank you. Wonderful, wonderful Father. Just close your eyes and just begin to receive a little bit more of the Holy Spirit right now. Just let, let Holy Spirit find you right now. Just take a big, deep breath of the Holy Spirit. Breathe them in. Just feel the Holy Spirit just going all through your body, cleansing you, freeing you, empowering you, anointing you. just to ask the Holy Spirit a simple question, and that is, can God use you to change a city? Listen to him. See what he says. Can God use you to change a nation? We're doing a little series at our church on Sunday mornings called City Changers. And we've looked at Nehemiah, how God used an administrator to change the city. We've looked at Daniel, actually changed the nation. We've looked at a lady in the New Testament, Dorcas, in Acts chapter 10, influenced the city through caring for the poor. 
we've looked at Philip, Acts chapter 8, a waiter, <laughs> used signs and wonders to change a city. And tomorrow morning, we're going to look at a lady who had one prophetic word from someone who didn't know that they were being a prophet at the time and brought revival to a city. I want you to realize that you are far more anointed than you think you are. That's the truth of the Word of God. I preached a sermon last month at our Signs and Wonders uh, about Philip and John, no, sorry, not Philip and John, Peter and John, and how in Acts chapter 3 they do an amazing healing. Uh, a lame man, 40 years lame, gets healed, and then they get arrested. They have the court case the next day, and the Bible clearly says that they're full of the Holy Spirit, and how Peter just goes right at the judge and the jury, <laughs> the same people, and just points his finger and tells them they're out of control. Uh, they're the ones to blame for everything that's happening, all that kind of stuff. They threaten them, and Peter and John at some point came to a revelation that there's a difference between just natural boldness and charisma, which Peter had, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, because when they get out of jail, when they're released, they go back to their church, and they say, God, that was the most amazing day we've ever had in our life. And if it takes for us to be thrown in jail and threats, bring it on. And they asked for more boldness. Remember, that's what they asked for? So the issue isn't anointing. The issue is not the anointing. The issue is, will you do something with the anointing? That's what the issue was. Are you afraid of people? Are you afraid of circumstances? Or are you able to just go, you know what? God's with me. Who can be against me? Yes? So, Daddy, would you begin to give that spirit to us? That if God's for us, if God's given us an idea, if God's given us an agenda, if God's given us a city, if God's given us a nation, if God's given us whatever, the Word of God is true. doesn't come back void. It doesn't bounce around and just drop to the ground. It's life. And so, Daddy, help us, help our, our heads to get it. Help our bodies, help our spirit to get that. That if you're with us, is anything too hard for God? I love those verses, don't you? They sort of take me from me to okay to woo. <laughs> I tell you, I was just so impressed with Roland and Heidi's ministry last week when we were in, in Africa. And uh, you can start heading back to your chairs. The six years of being in this Muslim community in the north of, of Mozambique, 100,000 people in that community, and just the change. Uh, Sandra and I were having lunch with Roland and Heidi a week ago Thursday, so like nine days ago. And uh, into the little restaurant, which isn't really a restaurant, it's just a couple mud walls <laughs> that sort of looks like a restaurant table, uh, walks in the, the wealthiest man in the city. He owns 80% of all the businesses in that town. A uh, Muslim gentleman who Heidi says, or told me today, has prayed to receive Jesus Christ into his life. His name is um, Muhammad Osman. And uh, he walks in like he owns the town, because he does own the town. And uh, it was just amazing to see this guy brag to me about how these stupid Americans, because he doesn't like Americans at all, how these stupid Americans are bringing life to his town. And it was like, <laughs> I just thought it was amazing. He's bragging on them. And just the, the things that the Muslims haven't done for their own people, here are Americans that are hated by the Muslims coming in and, as it were, putting them to shame. And they have the best school in the town. They have the only free medical center in the town. They feed everybody who needs a meal in the town. The government, Heidi is saying, is the one who brings the orphans to them. They don't take them to the Muslim orphanage, of which there's one. They bring them to theirs. They just recognize this is the best place. And it's six years that they've been there, from start to now, six years. And it was just like, oh my goodness, my goodness. It's good. 
Yes? yes? It's very good. Well, guess what we're going to do? Okay, don't guess. I'll tell you. Uh, where's Rob and Marco? Can I get you guys to come on up? There's a couple guys in my cell group. Where did Marco go? There he is over here. And uh, we're just going to minister some healing right now, if that's all right. How many of you have aches and pains? Oh, I'm glad you're here. That means we can be probably right <laughs> when we go to minister. So we just want to welcome the Holy Spirit to minister into our physical bodies, which he loves to do. Do you know that in the Old Testament, God says, I am the God who heals you? That's one of his names. Did you know that Jesus only did what his father asked him to do? Did you know that? And did you know that one-third of all of the narratives, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus is ministering to hurting sick people? Did you know that? So I want you to think about the math. I don't know how many hours a day Jesus worked, but let's say it's 12 hours a day. That meant four hours every day of his life, or sort of the three years that he's ministering, four hours every day Jesus did a healing service. And if he only did what his father wanted, what does that say about our daddy in heaven? He cares a lot about people who have sickness and pain. Yes? Who's going first? Marco? Rob? If you're here and you have healing in your left side, close to your spine, that's you. Go ahead and if, if you, healing, I'm already on to healing. <laughs> there is healing on the left side so, for any pain that you have near your spine, lower back. Yeah, just stand up as soon as these things are called out. And people around you just begin to lay hands on them as soon as someone stands right Lord. by you. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come right now. We lose healing into these backs. Any pinched nerves right now, in Jesus' name, we declare are loosed in Jesus' name. Whoa. There is someone that have... Um, a buzzing bzz sound uh, in your ears, and it looks like it's in this in this part in this in this area. I might be. Um, thank you, thank you. Over here, maybe anyone with a buzzing sound in the ears. Thank you, Father. We we just lift them up to you, and we release the healing power on them. We bind that buzzing sound, and we command to go. Just receive your healing. The Holy Spirit is touching you. A bzzz sound. It's a buzzing. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Thank you, Lord. Just pour your healing touch, your healing anointing. Anyone that is standing there, any one of you around, or the person that is standing, could you please pray for them? There is a couple of people over there that need someone around to pray for them. If you've been diagnosed with a blood condition, a blood condition, can you stand up? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> if, you've been if you've been diagnosed with a blood condition, stand up. I believe there's healing for blood conditions here. And those that are around, just lay hands on them. Holy Spirit, right now, just wave your hand if you stood up and nobody's touched you yet. Thank you, Lord. At the back here. Holy Spirit, we loose your power right now into the blood cells in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we command order to come. We command wholeness to come to every blood cell. We speak wholeness and life in the blood. There's life in the blood, life in the marrow, correction in the marrow and the bones right now. Any bitterness, we unhook, we pull out right now. We release any that have not been forgiven. In Jesus' name, we forgive them. We lose forgiveness. We thank you for healing to the marrow and healing to the blood. In Jesus' name. Somebody else is having trouble with your stomach. L looks like you have some, some ulcers in your stomach, and it uh, causes you reflex, acid reflex. Anyone, any person with that condition? Could you please stand up? Is that you, lady, in the blue? No? One here, one over there. Anyone around them? Could you please put your hand around them? 
pray for them. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your healing anointing. We ask you to touch that area, the affected area, and cancel everything that's bothering them. Fill them with your wonderful presence, with your love. Release your mercy, Lord, on them. Bring them back to complete healing. We thank you, Lord. Anyone with swelling in your feet right now, can you stand? Anybody with swelling in your feet? Pain in your feet? All right, let's have people run over to them real quick. Swelling, pain in your feet. Just hold your hand up until somebody comes and touches you. Father, we believe for impartation right now. As hands are laid on them, healing is granted to them in Jesus' name. We command the swelling to go down and the source of the swelling to cease in Jesus' name. And we rebuke the pain right now in Jesus' name. Someone, I don't know how to say it, but it's the roof of your mouth. Uh, you have some pain there. And it might be that yourself, uh, when you are singing, you are not able to hit some keys that you are trying to. Anyone related with that? Trouble in the uh, roof? How do you call it? Yeah, the roof of your mouth. Anyone? Wave at me, please. Is that you, lady? There's one there. Another lady over there. There is a couple of people over here. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for your words of knowledge. And Father, we thank you that when you show us something, it's because you really want to do something. And you want to heal those people. And Father, they, that they may use freely the singing to praise you, to bring glory and honor to your name. Heal them, Father. If you're here with problems in your knees, weakness in your knees, or pain in your knees, or knees that go out of joint, can you stand? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Go ahead and raise your hand. Let's rush over to them in faith. Father, right now, we loose your healing power into these knees, your Thank healing you, compassion into these knees. Enough pain in Jesus' name. We speak strength to these knees right now. Wholeness to these knees right now. Everything comes into order. Strength to the muscles. Restoration of the muscles in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Somebody else with trouble in your kidneys. You are in pain uh, because you have problem with your kidneys. Anyone on that? Kidney problem. There is a lady right there. There are two over there. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Anyone uh, close to them, please, to pray for them? Need some people there from the middle to go to the back over here. Put your hand up. Yep. Lady in the white. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> Just touch that affected area, Lord God. Right there, right there, your healing touch, your healing power. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you thanks, Lord. And I heard the Lord say the word oxygen, so I was taking that to mean that there's people with breathing problems that don't, when you take a breath, you do not get a full, like you don't, you don't get enough air. Who are those folks? Can I get you to stand up if that's you? So just put your hand in the air so we can see where you are. There's a gentleman over here. Others? Right at the front. Okay, Sean, right there. Holy Spirit, would you come? Welcome you, Holy Spirit. Just open up the lungs, open up the, the diaphragm, open up whatever is the blockage, and may, the, may their breath just come right in and bring refreshing, bring strength. May there not be any hindrances for them to be able to get a full breath of air, the strength that they need, the hope that they need, the, the power that they need, Daddy. Come. Come. Okay, go. Someone is having 
um, how you call this? Dizziness. And, um, and uh, a vomit sensation at the same time. Um, and looks like you tend to lose your balance. Anyone with that condition? Okay, the over lady here. over there. Just put your hand up if that's you standing up so we can see where you are. Thank you, Lord. Once more, Father, we invite your, your presence to touch everyone that is having this condition. We thank you that you indeed want to heal everyone, Lord. We release your healing touch, your healing power, your healing anointing. Thank you, Daddy. I have another word for those of you who didn't get a word, your word. If you didn't get your word, stand up. <laughs> I just felt the Lord saying that. So if what you have wasn't called out, stand up, please. Okay? If you're around one of these people that's standing, just go and put your hand on them. Ask them when you get there, say, where's the pain, where's the sickness? What are we praying about? Just go to them. If no one has come to you, put your hand in the air if no one's come yet. Some of you need to turn around and look behind you because the closest person is behind you. Gentleman over here that someone needs to go to. Back over here by the pole, gentleman in orange, someone needs to go to. Keep your hand up until someone comes. Back over here. Lady right over here. Good. Lady over here in blue. If someone comes, put your hand down. Tell the person who comes, where's the pain, where's the sickness? Just tell them what's going on. Holy Spirit, would you come? Anointing of the Holy Spirit, come. I love when Jesus is in Luke chapter 4, his very first recorded sort of like full teaching. It's in his hometown of Nazareth. And he quotes Isaiah 61. Remember that passage, the Spirit of the Lord is on me? And I love the fact that Jesus misquoted scripture. And in that passage, in Isaiah 60, there's only four things. Jesus said the anointing's good for five. And the fifth one that he adds in is opening the eyes of the blind. Jesus adds healing is part of the anointing. And he absolutely demonstrated that because uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 37 and 38 says that that Jesus went around doing good, and it all, is all about how the Holy Spirit came on him, beginning at his baptism, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, and he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the enemy. And I love the fact that, that Jesus, when he talks about the anointing in that passage from Isaiah 61, he says, open the eyes of the blind. Do you know why he said open the eyes of the blind? Because it was the only sickness in the Old Testament that hadn't been healed. Did you know that? There's not one story of anyone in the Old Testament getting their eyesight. There was lepers, there was the dead raised, but no blind people. And they thought that this is the impossible one. This is only the miracle that the Messiah can do. And Jesus made a mockery of blindness. He just spat in people's eyes. He put mud on their eyes. He, made, he had fun healing blind people, didn't he? And Jesus is saying that even the hardest of the hardest of the hard can be healed because of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing is this. It is supernatural power to do supernatural things. And sickness and pain have to bow the knee to the Holy Spirit. They have to give up. And so sickness in people's bodies, pain. I hope those of you at home, you were standing up as we we're calling out these different things. And we just speak to you right now that every sickness goes, every pain leaves in Jesus' name. Everyone who stood up for anything, stand up again, please. Anyone who stood up for anything, please stand up. Now, some of you will know right now if there's a change. Some of you won't know because you'll have to see a doctor. You'll have to wait two or three days and see how you are. But some of you will know right now. So I'd like you to check yourself and try to do something you couldn't do. See, see how you're doing. For example, can you breathe better? For example, has the buzzing in your ears gone? For example, are your, um, 
swollen ankles gone? For example, is the pain in your back gone? For example, any of those things that we just were talking about, if you're better, if you're better, can I get you just to run up here? We'll take four or five people just to share. So come on up. Those of you that are feeling better, run, 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 run. Come right up onto the platform over on this side over here with um, where Reese is. Come, come, come. Check yourselves again, folks. Don't be embarrassed about this. This is good. God's able to come. Okay, Mr. New York, come on over here. So what was wrong? Well, um, I asked for prayer for psoriasis, and, and they just surrounded me. And the thing was, uh, I didn't tell everything. I just asked for healing for psoriasis, but my head and my neck was hurting and everything. And by the time they finished praying, and I didn't even ask for it, my head and my neck started feeling better. And I was like, whoa! Wow, I just felt that's the presence of God and, and the freeness and this healing virtue just come throughout my whole body. It was awesome. I was like, yes. so What about the psoriasis? Wow, I'm looking at it and it, it's getting better. It's getting, it's getting better. You know, I mean, I'm looking at it and it used to be really bad and I'm, yeah. Sure. Well, that's good. Did you know that God's able to do bonus healings? Come on over here. So what was wrong with you? I had swelling in my feet. Okay. And now? They prayed for me. I felt the power of the Lord, and they feel good. <laughs> so, like, can you see, could you see a noticeable difference? Yeah, because this was puffed up earlier. It was puffed up, and now it's, it looks relatively normal. Yes, it does. So that's good, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus, come fill her up right now. More, more, more. Take a deep. Open your mouth. Glug, 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 glug. Did you know that you can't take a drink unless you put your head back? I have a friend who's, um, who is really sick right now of internal bleeding. Okay. When he said the word for bleeding, I was wanting to stand in place for her. Okay. Can we do that? Yeah, we, absolutely, we can do that. So what's your friend's name? Karen Kennedy. Karen. So Father, we just bless Karen right now. And we speak to that internal bleeding and say, stop right now in Jesus' name. Ooh, there you go. Come. Met this lady earlier. She's from Aurelia, which is like an hour and a half north of Toronto. What was wrong? Um, I was diagnosed with a blood disorder, primary immune deficiency disease that they found out I was born with. But two years ago, um, I met Isabel from, um, um, she was speaking at Isabel. Um, singing waters and she said that the Lord was going to in her prophecy to me that the Lord was going to heal my heart and my body this conference I didn't realize that I still was dealing with an orphan spirit but orphan spirit with respect to God um, and um, this weekend this week and especially this morning it, last night and this morning it's been dealt with and so when they prayed I just felt just such a peace a flow of peace and love and I just am declaring that I am healed of this blood disorder. So how would you know for sure? Like you're going to have to have a blood test or something like that? I have an appointment um, um, either with, with my immunologist uh, November 9th or 10th. Um, so I have to do blood work there. But also I, I'm actually um, quite a few of, with this immune disorder and a few, like my whole immune system, like my kidneys, my bladder, I had boils, I had um, uh, disformity, like I became like a quasi-moto, all these different things, and three out of, three or four days a week, I'm in bed, but I've been in bed with the Lord, and I asked him about coming, I didn't think I could make it to this conference, and I asked him, and he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God, so I am so grateful that I've come, it's been a life-transforming time, and I just know, I, I just know, I just feel that I am healed. Okay, very, very good, so Daddy, we're asking that when she has that that blood test in a couple weeks from now. Father, the doctors will give her a great report, a clean report. We just say, Father, cleanse that blood right now. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Oh, he's all over you. It's his presence with you right there. Go deeper, Daddy. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Barbara, can I get you to come over and just... Keep praying with this lady. Come on over here, sir.
What was wrong with you? I had pain in my lower back for years, okay. and it was really flaring up yesterday, and it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. gone. What couldn't you do? I had trouble lifting my leg any higher than this. I had trouble moving and bending over, and it's gone. It's gone. Can you bend down, squish, squat? Down. Nope. No pain. It's gone. Yay! Woo That's good, isn't it? Amen. Well, Daddy, seal this healing. May it never come back. No problems for the rest of his life. In Jesus' name. Zzz. That's how you seal someone's healing. I don't know that's true. I just made it up. Hello. What's happened with you? I do remember you. Yeah. What happened tonight? Well, I have been nursing for a number of years. And by lifting and lifting, I hurt my back. And tonight, the sisters came and they started to pray with me. And I felt the heat. The heat all through my back and all that up in my head. But I was diagnosed with cervical disc disease. So I hope that the Lord will take so how how's your how's your back right now? Well, it's still a bit sore. Is there an improvement? Well, I I can walk, okay. but I can't do a lot of. You can't, so you need, you need a little bit more. That's what you're saying. Let's stretch your hands to this lady. Just close your eyes. Holy Spirit, would you come? Give her more right now. Holy Spirit, go into her body. Go into her body. Go into her body. Fix what's wrong, Daddy. Repair her back. All the damage from being a nurse and holding people and lifting them. We forgive heavy people. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Just keep coming. I don't know if you can see from where you're sitting, but one of the wonderful things to watch is just the Holy Spirit coming on to people. Come, Holy Spirit. I love saying the word, come, Holy Spirit, and then being able to switch to the next prayer, which is more. <laughs> There we go. I learned that from John Arnott. That was the first prayer I learned on day one when I, I was John's catcher one evening, like maybe the third time I was here, John. And uh, John was saying, well, here's how you pray. You ask the Holy Spirit to come. When you see the Holy Spirit's there, you switch to more prayers. It's like, oh, okay, well, that's not too hard. I went to four years in Bible school. We didn't learn that. <laughs> oh, Daddy, keep coming. Is there one of the gals? Come on over here. Just pray for a little bit more. Go get her, Maureen. David, are you feeling better? Yeah. David's one of our pastoral interns. He works in our youth. What happened? Um, I got healed in my back two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Um, I hurt my back while trying to catch one of our youth during a game. I dived over a couch to try and grab him and completely missed him. Um, and then hit my back off the sharp bit of the stage. And so I couldn't walk for about a week. It was actually quite bad. Um, and then a couple of weeks later, it get be got better and better. But right now, what was called out at first, uh, healing for the lower left back right next to the spine is exactly where it was. And so it was a lot better, but when I did that, it was still sore, but now it's not sore anymore. It's gone. Yep, it's completely gone. Yeah. Yeah. Yay, amazing. Let me just tell you a little bit of story of this guy. Um, in the summer, we sent, how many guys went to the Ukraine? Uh, 11. 11, all guys, wasn't it? Or is there some no, girls? A couple girls. A couple girls as well. And they did a youth camp, a uh, freshman youth camp there, and the Holy Spirit showed up with these Ukrainian youth, and they went away from the camp and continued to, to pray and push into God, and we got a phone call to say, can you send the guys back and like fan the flames? So you guys were just in the Ukraine last week, yep. you and Ben and had another camp this time there's those 40 came and what happened well previously we were in the same facility which we had just squeezed 40 youth into and then this time we had 140 people squeeze into the same facility with 70 guys sleeping in a room which was very small and so not a single youth literally like i wouldn't normally say things like that unless it was true 
Um, but literally not a single person left without being utterly like SOM five months level of transformation in like two days. So it was crazy. The guy who quite obviously was most struggling to engage with God to begin with was the first to testify that his life had been changed at the end. It was beyond incredible. Very, very good. Excellent. So this is an anointed uh, young man here. Bless you, David. Okay, one more. Sir, come on over here. What's happened with you? Uh, about three years ago, uh, I was jumped uh, by three men, and they broke my shoulder. And I have surgery set up for um, this January coming up, which I'm about to cancel because I don't need it anymore. Yay! So you said like you were mugged. Uh, they didn't rob me, they just beat me up. Just beat you up. Okay. It's better that they just take your well and leave you alone. Yeah. So you're absolutely fine. Yeah, I was, it was 40%, 60%, now 100. And I couldn't do this at all, like, at all. Never. Like, I wouldn't even think about doing it because it'd pop out so fast. That's very, very good. Well, Daddy, would you come and just seal that so that he has no more problems? And we bless those three guys who jumped him. May they stay in their shoes and not jump. Oh, Jesus' name, come. I don't know what the technical word is to cause people to stop jumping. Oh. Do you have your Bible? I'd like you to turn to the book of Leviticus, chapter 3. And this is going to be a silly little verse. Verse 16, Leviticus chapter 3, verse 16. It's talking about a fellowship offering. Do you know what a fellowship offering is? Well, if you go to chapter 6, if you go to chapter 7, <laughs> if you go to chapter 7, verse 12, it says, if a person offers as an expression of, thanks give, of thankfulness, that, so a fellowship offering is to say, thank you, God, for what God's done. And in chapter 3, verse, uh, all of chapter 3 is about the fellowship offering and all the regulations. And there's this wonderful part of it, the very last part of verse 16. And it, it talks about the priest shall burn the sacrifices on the altar as food, an offering made by fire, a pleasing aroma. All the fat is the Lord's. How many of you are a little overweight? All the fat is the Lord's. Isn't that amazing? I love that verse. So I'm, I'm actually getting more of God, I think is the idea. It's a, the, <laughs> the reason I remember that verse is when I was in Bible school, we had a whole semester on the book of Leviticus taught by a Jewish believer just to help us to learn the Old Testament sacrifices, the Old Testament, all the different things that were going on. And, uh, Every time we had an exam, and I didn't know the answer, I'd write down all the fat is the Lord's, and the professor didn't like that after a while, so anyways. Well, the principle from that passage is that we are allowed to say thank you to God with our gifts for what God has done. And I just want to encourage you that if God has done something for you this week, it would be very appropriate for you to... As a, as a way to say thank you, to give an offering to the Lord. And uh, the, the evening offerings go, to, go into our revival account, which is where we you know, just try to spread the, the gospel all over and all the different things that we try to do to take money out of, um, or just to impact outside of this building. So I want to encourage you, that's what you're going to be sowing into tonight. And if you'd like to have a tax receipt for your gift, there's some envelopes in the seats right in front of you and you can fill those in, doesn't matter which of the ones you use. And if you could print your name as neat as possible, and Americans and Canadians were able to give you an income tax receipt at the end of the year, so that's coming up in a couple months. We usually mail them out in February. And uh, so I just want to encourage you that if the Lord's done something good, the tradition in the Old Testament, it is you are allowed and encouraged to say thank you and to give a gift as a, as a way to say that. How about you stand with me? Father, we, for those of us especially that have been here this week, we want to thank you for the different words that we've had. Father, I thank you so much for what uh, Jerry and Bernie shared with us and just the amazing transformation that's taking place in nations 
through ordinary business guys just passing on some of the principles that they've been living by. Father, I thank you for, for Johnny Enloe and for the amazing theological um, discourse that he gave us of the seven mountains and just where is it in scripture and all that kind of stuff, for giving some flesh, some understanding to this is your idea, this isn't just a, a person making it up, this is a God thing. Father, I want to thank you for Heidi and just the living example of a lady who's transforming cities, towns, nations. And Father, she's, she's doing almost every single mountain that there is. And Father, your anointing is just on this lady. And Father, for John and Carol, our founding pastors, and their teaching, their encouragement, deal with your heart, expect more, all those kind of things. <coughs> Father, we've had, a, we've had a full week. Father, thank you for the, the three men that shared this afternoon, Don and, and Michael and, uh, and Chris. Thank you for the politician that we had earlier in the week, Mario Sergio. Father, all that they've given away, all that they've put into us and in just inspiring us. And Daddy, we just want to say thank you for these people. Thank you for their testimony. And Daddy, may we be the ones who have those stories. May we be the ones who go from here and just say, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe a little bit more. I'm going to expect a little bit more. I am going to do a little bit more. So Father, would you come and would you bless us May we continue to be a blessing to you as we bless your people, as we minister to other people in our, in our workplaces, in our, in our jobs, in our vocations. Thank you, Father, that you're with us. And we want to bless you. <coughs> we want to bless you right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Nicole, are you bringing the band up? Are you able to do that? Good. Ushers, if you don't mind passing the buckets, that would be wonderful. Not sure who the ushers are, but I think you know who you are, so if you can pass the buckets, that would be great. And uh, let me just say a couple little things. I believe our bookstore, our resource center, is going to be open um, after the session tonight, so that'll be your last chance unless you're here tomorrow. And speaking of tomorrow, if you are staying overnight and you're going to be in the area, we have our meeting here at 10.30 a.m., and uh, we have uh, worship time, we have a teaching time. Tomorrow we're having a baby dedication. One of the uh, families in our church has just adopted a baby and want to bless her. And so uh, John and Carol are going to be presiding, 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 is that the right word, over the baby dedication. Yours truly is going to be preaching tomorrow. And uh, so that goes from around 10.30 until around 12.30-ish. And uh, we're going to have a ministry time. We're going to have people stand underneath the flags and fall over. We well, don't have to fall over, but... That's a good thing to do. And if you're uh, in the city and you're not a part of a church, can I just let you know that our church is actually 11 different places where we meet on a Sunday. Two of them are Sunday nights, one in Newmarket for young adults, one downtown Toronto at the Elma Combo Bar for young adults, and the rest of them are morning, morning congregations. Our Ajax campus meets at 10, all the other ones meet at 10.30. And there's a map just in the lobby and you can see where, where we are in Brampton, in Mississauga, uh, here, uh, Midtown Toronto, Downtown, High Park, Scarborough, uh, Newmarket, Ajax. Did I get them all? And one coming near you, coming to a place near you eventually. So you got lots of options for tomorrow. Let's stand up and let's worship one more time before we have our founding pastor John Arnott come and share the word.
Very, very good. I, I uh, just have really enjoyed the worship all week. Have you enjoyed the worship? Don't, friends, stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to one other group, and that is all of the, uh, the camera technicians and the folks that are behind the scenes, the folks that are wearing like black shirts, like our camera guys over here. And so bless you guys up in the booth over there. And uh, a couple of them are interns, a couple of them are, are volunteers, uh, a couple of them are on our staff. So thank you very, very much. Stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. We're not done. One of the things that I like about, not I like, I love about John and Carol, there's a whole bunch of different things, but one of them is they give people a chance. So I am one of those people that's had a chance. We've, uh, at this church, like we have 200 plus cell groups. And these are folks that have been given a chance, and some of them have done exceptionally well. Like, they just absolutely were meant to be leaders. And so, like, the, the 11 campuses that we have are all homegrown people that have grown through this ministry, become cell leaders, just the anointing of God is for more. And John and Carol just love to fan the flames, and I'm sh absolutely sure that John's favorite word in the whole Bible is more. Would I be correct, John? More. more. Let's, let, like a longer introduction, is that what you're saying? More? Let's welcome John Arnott. Wow, thank you, Steve, very much. And uh, I just want to add my thanks, too, to everybody that makes all of these conferences work so well, Lillian and all her team and, and uh, all the camera crew and all the worship guys. And uh, hasn't the worship been amazing this week? This every one of the teams just so so good so really really appreciate it it's just really neat to see nicole leading tonight where'd you go nicole you ran over there oh anyway just great nicole's been with us since she was just a little girl and uh yeah she was like 14 15 years old and uh her and her mom and her brother who's living in Sweden, I think, now. Yeah, so tell somebody beside you you're happy. Oh, how can you not be happy when God is just moving and doing so much? Wow. I want to talk to you, to uh, all of you, for a few minutes tonight about the most wonderful person in all the world. His name is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We, he's the expression of God, the Trinity, here on earth. So that it is a fulfillment of what the Lord said before he left, that it is better for you if I go away. Because if, if I don't go away, the, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, will not come. But if I go, I will send him unto you. And Jesus said it is better for you and I to have the Holy Spirit because it's like having Jesus all to yourself all the time. That's amazing, isn't it? So I want you to think about that. What would it be like to have Jesus with you all to yourself all the time? So whenever you wanted to ask a question, wherever you wanted a hug, wherever you wanted anything, a healing or a blessing or a wisdom or something, you could just, you know, go off to one side and say, Jesus, what about this or that or the other? You'd have him all, all to yourself all the time. And that's exactly what we have with this person, God, the Holy Spirit. And it's a miracle how God can be with everybody all at once, isn't it? I mean, talk about multitasking. I mean, that is absolutely off the off the chart but but he can do that because he's all powerful in so many ways and um, yet he wants to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us and so um, I want to talk about the Holy Spirit and then we want to experience him yet again and uh, how many are looking forward to the fire tunnels tonight I love fire tunnels, by the way, because they're just a different model. You know, the idea is not to fall down this time. The idea is to stand up and try to make it all the way through to the end. 
I heard a story about a girl um, that Bob Eckblad, a friend of ours, was, uh, uh, was teaching and training. She was a university student in his class. And so he was talking about getting overwhelmed with the Holy Spirit. Nothing was happening to her. She felt absolutely nothing, 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 nothing. Got prayer from this one, prayer from that one, prayer from the other. Didn't feel anything. Anybody here relate to that? Yeah, we used to, we used to call all of the people, I was one of them, the hard to receive, you know. We'd call them off into a, a side group, and I would just talk to them and coach them for a while and, and just help them to just calm down and receive the Holy Spirit. And it would just be amazing how almost all those people would get it. Well, this girl went through a fire tunnel 17 times. And Bob just kept saying, we'll go through again. We'll go through again. Go through again. The 17th time, guess what happened? She got absolutely blasted, rip-roaring, drunk in the Holy Spirit. And God just landed on her and changed her life forever. And so, after all is said and done, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, there is a profound change. There's a shift because suddenly the reality of God is not a way off there somewhere, either at the end of your life or someday in the, in the future, in the distance, but all of a sudden it's right here, present tense, right now, God exploding on the inside of you, bringing all of his wonderful love and joy and peace and all those things, and it makes an absolute profound difference. How many of you here can testify um, that God has done that with me? It was so uh, cool, really, to have um, uh, Bernie Torrance, when, when he came here, he did it again this time, but especially when he was here before in September, he, he wanted to walk right to the spot in this auditorium and stand in that spot where his life was changed forever by being immersed in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that cool? And I mean, he was a dynamic guy before that happened, but I tell you what, there's a shift that comes in, in the whole makeup of, of your, your awareness and your worldview and what's real and what's important when the Holy Spirit comes and immerses you in his power and in his presence. And uh, Johnny Enroll was really doing the same thing. He said, guys, it's just been all these years I wanted to tell you uh, how my life was so changed when I, when I came to Toronto. And, and, and of course, it's not the fact that they came here. It's the fact that this happened to be the place where the Holy Spirit impacted them and touched them, took them to a whole new level. And see, their lives were never the same again. Isn't that wonderful? How can you just go to a place and meet God and be changed forever? But that's exactly what the Holy Spirit is intending to do in your life and mine. It's amazing. Heidi's story, the same thing. She could take you right to the spot where it happened. I mean, there's several spots for her, actually. One of them was right over here. The other one was right over there. And she referred to it, actually. She stood on her head for over half an hour, like something like 40 minutes. And, I mean, it's hard enough to stand on your head for five minutes or two minutes. I mean, I don't even think I want to try it anymore. I used to be able to do it, Michael. <laughs> but 40, 40, 40, min 40 minutes she, with her feet in the air, you think, what's all that about? And when we asked her, Heidi, are you okay? What's God doing? She's saying... He just keeps saying that he's going to turn my world upside down. And boy, hasn't he just. Hasn't he just. Well, let's open to the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8. And there's a wonderful promise here. It's the last words of Jesus where he is saying... Um, Something very, very important. How many think the last words of Jesus are probably important? I mean, he's still speaking, of course, but these are his last words on earth as he ended his earthly ministry and ascended into heaven. And here's what he said. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And I love to read that in the Living Translation, which says this. But when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive power 
and you will tell people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And so now the Lord is promising the Holy Spirit to come in this passage as someone who's going to empower us to actually go out and take those mountains of culture that we've been talking about all week, whether it's education or business or finance or government or the family or even the church or whatever it is, how many know you're going to need power to do this? And I, uh, I often talk about these things in as much as the, the context of the great commandment first and then the great commission that I was speaking about here just the other day. And so we want to get that sense of, guys, it's not either or. And there's no rush to, come on, come on, you've been doing this soaking thing long enough, now get up and get to work and get busy and do something productive. And stop being foolish and crazy and being on the floor and rolling around and all those kinds of things. I so appreciated Heidi just putting it all in context and giving people permission to come and soak in the presence of God. Because see, it's life changing to get in his presence. And yet there, there is a social pressure to not do that because it looks disorderly, it looks uh, kind of random, it looks a little bit over the top, and, and, and in the minds of many people, this is not really a good thing to do in church. How many understand what I'm saying? And see, you've got to get over that because God wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And uh, how many know that God only wants good things for you? He doesn't want bad things. He's, you know, he does try to humble us sometimes. And especially when you really need it, he, he has a way of humbling you. But think about Heidi standing on her head for all that time. Do you think that was humbling for her? How many think it probably was? Uh, knowing her like we do, uh, I don't think she needed it especially, so I don't think that's what God was after primarily. He was giving her a prophetic object lesson that I am going to turn your ministry upside down. Now, how many think if God stood you on your head for 45 minutes, you'd probably remember that for a while? <laughs> especially when your husband's worried and he's looking at you and others are saying, are you okay? Are you okay? Things like that. But bless her heart, she just went for it. She says, I don't care who likes it and who doesn't. It's God. I know it's God. And I'm going to trust him for whatever he wants to do. And what he did was he filled her with the Holy Spirit and gave her a prophetic word in the midst of it all and said, I am about to turn your ministry upside down. And boy, didn't he just. Right after that, she went home. They had three hurricanes, one after another, flooded the whole country. And the UN came in. They didn't know where anybody lived. And they came to, to Heidi and, all, and Roland and their team. And all the UN helicopters, Heidi would fill them up with food, put a preacher on board and a bunch of Bibles and send them off to some stranded village. And those desperate people wanted the Bibles before they wanted the food. And there were about 40,000 people saved in about a four-month period of time while they dealt with that flood. And it exploded with a whole bunch of new churches. That's the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't want you to disqualify yourself and say, oh, well, that's Heidi after all. Look at her. No. Whatever lies the enemy whispers to you and says, oh, well, you're too old or you're too young or you're not educated enough or you're too fat or you're too skinny or you're too dumb or you're too this or too that, too the other. I want you to realize that is not true. Because God can take anything and use it. And Carol and I often say, if God can use us, he can use anybody. Carol grew up in a little town called Milverton, which is about an hour and a half west of here give or take, a town of about 5,000 people. Was it then? 
How many then? 1,200. 1,200 people. And if you'd ask those people, what do you think? That little Carol Bechtel, is she going to amount to anything? What is she going to do for, you know, to change the world or anything? People would think, well, gosh, I really don't know. Really don't know. But God, see, when you say, but God, and if the devil tells you, you know, you, you, you'll never take any mountain, not you. How many have heard that voice this week? Come on, be honest. I want you to say back to him, but God. But God. And then often he'll remind you of your past. Yeah, but you did this, that, this, that, and you failed to do the other, and you haven't even the other, and he reminds you of your past. If he reminds you of your past, just simply remind him of his future. And he'll leave you alone for a while. He really will. The lake of fire for you, buddy. Get out of my way. We're going. We're going we're to move mountains. But it won't be us. It will be the Holy Spirit moving within us, which is so amazing. Acts 1.8. You will receive power. The word there is dunamis. And, of course, we, this is a, 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 a quote or a reiteration of what John the Baptist said and what Jesus said. John said, there's one coming after me that... I'm not even worthy to undo his shoes. He is going to immerse you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, for some of us that have a church background, baptism comes with, uh, with uh, tradition and with meaning and with baggage in a way because it means some, something to do with water. It means you're going to get sprinkled or it means you're going to get immersed and dunked or whatever. But the word in Greek means immersed. You're going to be immersed. And it's not just quickly in and out. It's submerged. You're going to be pickled. You're going to be submerged in this one, the Holy Spirit, and in power and in fire. And it's going to make a huge difference. Now, how does it happen? How does this happen to us? Well, I think we need to position ourselves. I think we need to calm down. It's not a time to rev it all up, you know, and pray, 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 and talk, talk, talk. I think when you quiet yourself down and begin to receive from God, because you're calling upon a person who's not uh, totally living within you. I believe he's in you if you're a Christian, but there's, there's a, uh, an, an increase. There's a more that happens when the Holy Spirit comes. And when you think about what kind of a person uh, he really is from uh, the book of Galatians chapter 5, uh, we see that the Holy Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and gentleness and meekness even. And so see, when, the more you shout, I mean there's a time to shout, but there's, this is calling for intimacy like you would do with your friend. And you say, hey, I want to, let's just draw close for a moment. Can you practice this for a minute? Just hold your hands out to him. And say, Holy Spirit, gentle, loving, wonderful Holy Spirit, will you draw near to me? I want to be close to you. I want to be able to say the Holy Spirit is my best friend. And we begin to desire him in the inward parts. We begin to desire God. And as you draw near to him and, and, and your heart is right and pure towards him, and you're not trying to marry him for his money, you're not trying to always get something from him, you're, you're longing for a relationship that's pure. And you're saying, oh God, I so understand that I absolutely need you in my life. And as I draw near to you, will you draw near to me? And then you learn to wait, and then you learn to listen. And the next thing you know, you begin to be aware of an electricity or 
or a heaviness coming upon you. Sometimes it's a fire. Something starts to burn on you. I know Carol, last night, she's just so, as the power of God came on her, she all of a sudden got so hot as that fire of his presence came upon her. And so that's how it happens. The, the promise is there. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Do you take time to wait on him? Now, where we're going with this is I want you to, to think about I always need to be filled and refilled so that I can go out now and in the power of God and be fruitful and, and bring great glory to the Father through it. What is it that happens? The Spirit of God begins to just blend his personality and his nature and his power and his love and blend that with your spirit. And there's an, an intermingling with the Spirit of God with your, with your body, soul, and spirit, with you as an individual. And I tell you what, it feels better than anything else on earth. It really does. How many have been transformed by this experience that I'm talking about? The immersing in the Holy Spirit. Now, I want us to expand the term. And I realize that some of us have grown up in Pentecostal charismatic circles where the baptism of the Holy Spirit was clearly defined and very often it was, it was said with the initial evidence of speaking in other tongues. And so that's fine. I love that as an initial evidence, but I don't know if it's initial for everybody. I think it's a promise for everybody. But see, let's not limit him. It's, he's so much bigger than that. What if he wants to immerse you in fire? What if he wants to immerse you in power? What if he wants to completely change you, see? And the other thing is, it's not a one-off thing. Oh yeah, I had that 10 years ago. I had that 15 years ago. No, it's something that happens over and over and over and over again. It charges your batteries. It's kind of like, batteries run down they need to be recharged and we're like that at least i am aren't you and so we get connected with the source and we begin to get immersed once again in the holy spirit and then what is the result what happens to people that spend time getting filled up with god what do you think Yeah, <laughs> that's one thing for sure. But it's, it's as you spend time with him under the power for an hour. We used to call it carpet time. Now we call it soaking. But nevertheless, God speaks to people. We're in there in that wonderful state. And I love what happens because the, the world around you seems to dim down and this spiritual awareness that is on the inside and, and with God speaking, that is turned up. It's not like you can't hear what people are saying. And if you say to them, are you okay? They can say yes. But they're, they're just, that's dim compared to what God is showing them and what God is saying. And he gives you things to do. And so you get up from that and then you want to go and give it away to somebody. And that's, that's the part where you know, many times people miss the blessing because they say, well, I'm not quite ready yet. Please don't wait till you're ready. Um, you'll never be totally ready to do this stuff. But we want to get a measure of healing, and then we want to go. And that's how it happens. Get some, and then go. And so I mentioned about uh, the Great Commandment first, and then the Great Commission. But when, when it comes to people soaking under the power, I just want to refer you to uh, a report that we got from a psychologist here by the name of Margaret Paloma. Some of you are aware of this. Margaret is a psychologist who works for the University of Akron, Ohio. And she came to us in, in 95, and she said, I want, John, I would like to survey the people here that are spending so much time under the power on the floor. And at first I didn't know if I really wanted that to happen. I mean, it's a sacred, personal thing for people. I didn't know if I wanted it put under the microscope, you know. But anyway, as we asked the Lord, he said, like, yeah, go ahead. 
She surveyed like a thousand people almost. There was 993, if I remember right. And, and she asked them all these questions about what did you feel and what happened, what was the result, and this and that and the other. But it came to this. 93% of them said this. As a result of what happened to me soaking under the power, I am now more in love with Jesus than I have ever been in all of my life. And see, these were not new Christians, like 15 years old or something. They were more or less seasoned people. They, the, the profile was a lady, 38 years of age, with three years of university, and probably uh, in the ministry with her husband. That was the profile of the people that took that survey. So they were, they'd been around the block a few times. They'd seen a lot of things. And so they're saying, as a result of what happened to me, I am more in love with Jesus than I have ever been before in all of my life. And when you hear stuff like that, you just know that that's the Holy Spirit at work. How do you know the devil doesn't do stuff like that? He may put some people on the floor, but they don't get up saying, I'm more in love with Jesus than I've ever been in all my life. Okay, so that was the first thing. The second thing was, I think it was about 87% of them said, I am more excited about uh, sharing Jesus with my family and friends than I have ever, ever been before. And so that's the, the twin dynamic here of what happens when the Holy Spirit comes and fills you. You rediscover your first love and you fall freshly in love with him. And that's why Steve and I and, and Carol and Sandra and all of us are so... Uh, absolutely gung-ho for people to get a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit, including ourselves. Because in the, in the invasion, in the, in the wonderful invasion of the Holy Spirit coming into your life, you will go through those, those two dynamics right there. You will find yourself more in love with Him to a greater depth and a greater measure, and then you will want to share that with people you meet, family, friends, acquaintances, waitresses, um, people on airlines or trains and buses, wherever you meet people, you'll find you, there's just something rises up that you want to share the Lord with them. Why? Because he has given you power, dunamis power, anointing to both uh, have an inward work of grace where you fall in love with him and then an outward work of grace where you want to share the good news of Jesus with all these others. So it's amazing. It really is amazing. And so, like I'd mentioned earlier, we have the, the, the first commandment first, the great commandment first, and then the great commission. And the great commandment is simply Matthew 22, 37, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind. How many want to be able to put your hand up and say, that's me? Here I am, Lord. I truly... Woo, love you with all my heart and all my soul and all my strength and all my mind. Wouldn't that be nice to be able to say that with integrity and honesty and truth? That's where we're going. That's the inward work. And then the outward work is Matthew uh, 28, go into all the world and uh, preach the good news to all the nations. Uh, because all authority has been given unto him. I want you to see it's a, a two-step program. What does it look like when someone goes out with zeal to do the great uh, commission, but they haven't got the great commandment down, really, and they don't know much about love, and they've never had the Holy Spirit just so fill their heart and melt that... The, the, the edges off of them and all of that. What does it look like? Have you ever met Christians like that? Scalp hunters? They're bent on converting you. They really don't care about you, but it's good to have another notch on their belt. That kind of a thing. I mean, it's, it's see, people quickly pick up on it. I don't think they, they really care about me. They're just on this crusade to make disciples or convert people or whatever. How many have felt that? How many know that doesn't work? How many, have, how many have done that stuff? I'm not the only one, am I? Go around door to door trying to get saved, turn or burn, you know, just kind of tell it straight. 
give them the truth. And see, people can't take the truth straight like that. It has to be the truth in love. And that they can take on board. It is so important that we get filled up with the love of God first and then, as we hear his voice, move on out with the, with the Great Commission and begin to see people really, really touched and changed and all of that. Now, we had uh, a comment or two by Heidi about priorities. And, and she made a statement like this. She said, I would never trade his presence for um, transformation. Wow, that was a powerful statement. That was a powerful statement. But here's the good news with that. You don't have to. See, it's not either or. Let's see, presence, transformation, mm, I'll go for transformation. No, you, you, it's both and, you see. Both and. You don't have to choose. It's both and, and it's more. Think about it. The Holy Spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. And if he is going to come and fill you, what is that going to look like? See, the fact that you would live through that experience is a miracle right there. God, <laughs> who's very powerful, he spoke and things like the sun came out of his mouth. If he's going to touch you, I mean, the miracle is you live through that. How many agree? And so don't be surprised that people fall down or something or scream even. I tell you what. He's going to touch you, but it's a touch of love. And it's so healing on the inside. And I love watching what happens to people. I, I see them laugh and I see them cry and, and laugh and cry and they just get so free. And oh my goodness, it's just amazing when people get filled. It, but it's a holy thing. It's not something to be mocked and ridiculed or whatever. But it's a very, very precious thing. And all of you who are leaders and pastors, anybody may be watching right now, the, any, every revival needs to be pastored, just like the one in the book of Acts. That's the most powerful one ever. And yet we needed it to be pastored by Peter, James, and John, and the others that were there. But as they cared for it, and they, they followed the, the leading and the instructions of the Lord, there was a tremendous thing that went on in the hearts and lives of people where they got so deeply touched by the love of God on the inside for them, and then they took it out um, to the world around them. And so the priority is really soak and then go, to quote Heidi again. Soak and go. Soak and go. Soak and go. And I think the Holy Spirit is saying now to us all as a group, it's time to go into the secular world around us and bring the kingdom of God and take those mountains. But you will not do it in human strength and wisdom, but you will do it in the power uh, of the Holy Spirit that is released wonderfully through you. And so that's it. The great commandment first, and then the great commission. And when we're full up with him, filled up with his compassion, then we have to share it. And he's equipped us to do just that by the power of the Holy Spirit. You, point to your friend and say, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. What an incredible promise. Now then, as we begin to uh, go out and share this with others, we need to we need to see what this looks like. And a very favorite scripture of mine is John chapter 14, verse 12, which says this, uh, truly I say to you, anyone who believes in me, have they got it up there? Most assuredly I say to you. Now when Jesus says most assuredly, See, in, in the Greek here, he uses the word amen, amen, which is truly, truly, or for sure, for sure, or let it be done, let it be so. This is really, really true, guys, okay? So he's emphasizing something 
saying, hey, listen, this is really, really true, and it's really important for you. You need to get this. He who believes in me, he or she, are you a believer tonight? Yeah? Wave at me if that's you. All heaven is watching to see who's not putting their hand up right now. Okay? He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Point to your friend and say, you're going to do what Jesus did. This is so rich. <laughs> okay, now what did Jesus do, everybody? Shout it out to me. What did he do? What? He healed people. Raised the dead. What else? Walked on water. What else? What? What else? Come on. He walked on water. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He cleansed the lepers. He quieted the storm. He fed the multitude. He turned water into wine. You know, a couple of other things. There was a couple of other things he did. On two occasions, they tried to arrest him. And he got away supernaturally. Don't you love that? Uh, in other words, in Nazareth, they tried to jump him and uh, drag him out of the city and throw him over the cliff. Remember that story? But it, it says this, but he passing through the midst of them went his way. He just walked through them, supernaturally it was, and got away. How many would like to do that? So the next time they mug you, you just pass through the midst of them and go away. No problem, right? Hey, I bless you guys, right through. <laughs> Another thing he did was when he came walking on the water, the disciples had been rowing hard all night. It's about 3 in the morning, and they see this figure walking on top of the water, and they're all freaking out. It's a ghost. It's a ghost. And he says, don't be afraid. It's, it's me. Uh, it is I. And then uh, Peter, you know, got out of the boat and walked on the water. And he kind of faded there for a bit, but, but he walked too. How many would like to walk on the water? That would be amazing. But see, then Jesus got in the boat with them, and then something else happened. It says, immediately the boat was across the lake at the other side on the shore. It's transported by the supernatural power of God. How many have ever been transported? Carol, you have. You thought you were. You, I mean, you say you were. You, you were, yeah. Carol did a, about a three-hour three car ride in an hour, and they don't know how that happened. It was less than an hour, actually. Wouldn't you like to do that? See, that's the promise. The works that I do, you will do also. And these works are not just for your added fun and entertainment. They are to convince the world around you that our God is a supernatural God. I want us to read that verse again. Put it up again, guys, if you would. John chapter 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, point to your friend and say you. This means you. And then the one on the other side, it means you. Take your finger and point it at your own heart and say, and it means you. So don't listen to all those things about, no, no, you're not educated enough, you're not smart enough, you're not this, you're not that. Oh, no, 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 it means you. I'm a believer in Jesus, this means me. The works that he did, I will do also. So you can stop right there. Forget the greater works for a moment. The greater works, I mean, that's going to be really cool. But let's just begin with the works that Jesus did. Do you know he raised a man from the dead who had been dead four days in the heat. And Martha was right. Oh, don't roll away the stone. He's going to stink to high heaven. Do you know why they rolled away the stone before he cried out? So that the smell of that dead man could go wafting through the whole crowd. And people are going, oh, my gosh, he's... He's dead, all right, you know. Oh. And then he cried out, Lazarus, come forth. 
Do you know there's an awful lot wrong with someone who's been dead for four days? <laughs> the blood is all hardened and dry. The liver's shot. The kidneys are done. The brain is, forget about the brain. I mean, nothing works. What a miracle. And he's saying the works that I do, you will do. I tell you people, we are in for the ride of our lives. We're in for the ride of our lives. Now you gotta understand, we've had an awful lot of fun around here for the last 16 years. It has been amazing, it's been glorious. Both what's happened in this house and what God has done beyond here as we and many others now have gone and taken this around the world. But it's about to get a whole lot better. And so see, this is not just something that would, you know, that I'm gonna say, please try to spend a little more time being in the presence of the Lord and then do a little bit more, open your mouth a little bit more. I'm talking about transformation. If you will soak in his presence and get into that holy place and let God come and fill you and talk to you and instruct you and teach you and heal you from the inside out. Then he will lead you in exploits that will blow the minds of you and everybody around you with the good things that God does. And they're gonna wanna know, how did you do that? And you're gonna say, by the power of the Holy Spirit because without him, I can do nothing. That's what John 15 says, chapter five I think it is. I am the vine and you're the branches. Whoever abides in me will bear much fruit, but for without me, you can do nothing. See, this isn't, we're not talking about human effort here. We're not talking about some sort of a psychological uh, suggestion that gets people all excited and then they go and act out of a carnal uh, excitement or something like that. We are talking about the very real power, dunamis power of the Holy Spirit coming upon you and transforming you on the inside and then propelling you on the outside to go and give it away to a very broken, troubled, hurting, needy world. So, what are you gonna do with your little life? Huh? What are you gonna do with your little life? How many want to say, Lord, I want my life to count for something? I want my life to count for something. Jesus, I want the great commandment just bubbling up in me. I really, really do. Just lift your hand to him, tell him that for a moment. The works that I do, you will do. Whew. What a savior. The Holy Spirit is both for you and also for them. It's amazing how um, people who don't really get it, they don't understand these things, are not happy when, when you get it and you're going after them. And so if you're spending time on the floor soaking in the presence of God, they don't really like that, and they'll read you scriptures that say, you know, get up and get going. Uh, and yet, we need to realize that there are three emphases in the kingdom that the Lord is bringing to each and every heart. And the first is you, you need to receive, you need to be filled, you need to drink it. The second is him. And see, when the Holy Spirit comes mightily upon you, that will enable you to love him uh, at a far greater anointed way than ever before. And so the Holy Spirit now is for you and for him to have a relationship that's not shallow and not distant, but it's powerful and meaningful and, and important and, and just charged with emotion and life and love. And you can say, yes, love, joy, peace, gentleness, all that, that's what I receive from him. And you can worship him and say, thank you, Father, and, and more is poured into you, and you can pour back into him, and he pours back into you. And see, it's for you and it's for you to be able to worship him. The Holy Spirit is for you. And I don't want anybody ever to feel guilty about 
uh, having two, three hours every day to be with him and drink of him. And see, that in and of itself is, uh, is a good thing to do. It's not that we spend time with him so we can get filled up so we can be more fruitful in ministry. No, it's an end in itself. Just for you to be with God, just for you. Do you see it? See, I don't spend time with Carol uh, because I want to manipulate her into doing more things for me, for example. See, love doesn't do that. There's something pure about love where love just enjoys the fact that we can be together. And so it's enough for us just to be together, just to hang out without achieving something, if you follow what I'm saying. It's not a waste of time for us just to be together, to go out and have dinner together. We went out the other night and just, you know, just for the fun of it, really. We went to Swiss Chalet, no big deal. You don't drop $200 when you go to Swiss Chalet. You just go out and enjoy each other. And we did, and it was great, wasn't it, babe? Well, we could have eaten at home, we could have done that, but we just wanted to be together, do you understand? How many think that's a good thing? That's a, how many think that lovers and people who are in love understand that? Anybody in love here? Really? You two honeymooners? Come on. Yeah, and see, love doesn't need to, to take it any further. It's just let's be together and enjoy each other. God has a heart like that. Listen, are you ready for this? He really loves you and one of the highlights of his day is to spend time with you and you forgot to ask him for anything you were just hanging out and just being together he loves that but you see that's that's one side and that's an end in itself and that's great but inevitably what happens is you get so strengthened by the relationship and the intimacy that he speaks to you and, and says, why don't we do this, why don't we do that? And, and now you get excited and motivated to go and do something for the kingdom of God. And so here we go now. He, you get sent out. And that's when the Holy Spirit empowers you and equips you to do exploits for the kingdom of God. And I tell you what, it's thrilling to see how God can use little old you. How many here have never healed anyone yet in Jesus' name? It hasn't happened yet. Uh, hold your hands up. We're going to pray for you. Lord, I ask you to make divine appointments for these people so that you begin to use little old them. Now, let me give you a tip. You're not perfect now, and you never will be. So this isn't for just perfect people to do. This side of heaven, you're not going to walk in perfection. I hope you know that. You can shoot for it, and that's good, but never, just so you know. So don't listen to the accuser. When the opportunity comes up and you have a friend or someone who says, oh, my back is just killing me, uh, why don't you just pray for them, tell that pain to go, and watch what happens when God uses little old you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you and he flows out. That will make your day. Honestly, it will. God beginning to use you. It is just such a powerful thing. And so get in the glory of God, soak in him, love him, and then as he speaks to you to do something, then go do it. Now let me give you an example. This always comes on you suddenly. You know, you're, you're busy, maybe you're, Carol and I might be running to a plane and we're at the check-in counter and we got our bags and, and they're wanting our passports and this and that and, and, and all of a sudden you, you notice that the check-in girl is kind of winching, you know, she's, and you say, are, are you okay? Have you, have you got back pain? And she says, well, actually, yes, I do. Or she might say, how do you know who else is? I mean, I could tell by the way you were winching and uh, whinging and flinching and all that stuff. But you say, listen, just say this after me. And you say, this healing belongs to me because of what Jesus has done. I receive my healing now in the name of Jesus. Boom. Just take their hand. 
check it right now. How's that feel? And do you know what they do 95% of the time? How did you do that? I feel amazing. How did you do that? Do you know what you say then? Oh, that was Jesus on the outside. Would you like him on the inside? Wow, yes, I would. Lead him in a little prayer of Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins, come into my heart. We've done that over and over and over again to clerks in stores and people in airports and waitresses and waiters and, and all that kind of stuff. And Steve does it better than I do, I think. He's just forever doing that. But see, the, the, the first time that God uses you, it's like you can't hardly believe it. And you give him this whole long list of why he shouldn't use you. But you've got to remember, it's not you really. It's the one who lives within you. It's the Holy Spirit doing through you the very thing that he claimed that he would do and said that he would do. So it, it gets to be a matter of obedience and walking in radical love. So don't despise those times of refreshing and filling. They're absolutely necessary in order for you to be fruitful. But realize without him you can do nothing. John uh, chapter 15, verse 5 says it clearly. Without me, you can do nothing. Turn to your friend and tell him, you can't do it on your own. You must do it as you're connected with the vine, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ himself, as the Holy Spirit moves through you. So there's a time to take in and there's a time to give out. And I think right now is a time for you to take in and receive. This conference has been amazing. We've been receiving, we've been taking it in, we've been getting built up in our faith, built up in our hope. Many people have been healed, many people have received the power. We've been taking in and taking in and taking in. But you're all going home probably tomorrow or so. And so now it'll be an opportunity to give it away. But we're going to receive tonight when we go through these fire tunnels. And uh, I want to talk about receiving just for a little bit. Receiving is like, uh, well, receiving. <laughs> it's different than giving out. It's taking in, all right? Um, when we, it's, when we think about two-way radios, you know, around here for, I don't know, 10 years or so, we had these uh, phones that would also be like walkie-talkies because they were really cheap to operate. And when our whole staff, we'd just, you know, find Steve and go beep beep, and he would come back, yeah, what you want, and then I'd let it go and say, hey, this or that, and okay. You know, it, but, but you, 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 you couldn't have an open line where you could interrupt them and talk. You had to, you had to transmit first, then let go, and then receive. How many understand what, I'm, what I mean by that? So transmitting or giving out, sending out, was different than receiving the message. So sending is different to receiving. And so it is with the Holy Spirit, you see. If you're doing all the talking, now you're, you're not going to be able to drink of him. And so there's a time just to quiet yourself down. And let someone else do the talking, let someone else do the praying, and you just receive it into your heart and receive that anointing and trust that the Lord is going to move through that imperfect person out there who's praying for you and good things are going to happen to you. Now, Carol liked to say it this way, you cannot kiss and talk at the same time. <laughs> Can't kiss and talk. How many get that one? All right, and so what does that mean? It means there's a time to talk or there is a time to pray and there's a time to just receive. And a lot of times when, when people are in a prayer line, they so desperately want the Holy Spirit and they think they got to rev it up, you know, just... And so they're praying fervently, shandai, shandai, ba da ba 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 and away they go in prayer. But... Um, it almost works against them because, you see, you cannot kiss and talk. And the Holy Spirit wants to come and kiss you. He wants to come and fill you. Remember, he is love and joy and peace. And it's amazing what happens. 
And very often we'll just say to a person, shh. If Carol and I are going by a line of people, invariably one of them or two of them or a bunch of them are praying fervently. And yeah, sometimes we stay there and wait and try, but nothing goes in. So we just move on and say, I'll be back and just leave them, let them run down for a while. And then we come back and they've, they've had their prayer time, now they can receive. It's right then that they'll receive it. And we've had critics say, see, they're telling you not to pray, that tells you there's something wrong with it. No, we're not telling you not to pray, I'm just saying that when you're receiving, that's not the time for sending, all right? So I hope you get that straight. And so it is tonight, when you walk through these fire tunnels, this is a time for you to receive. Now you're in your heart, you're going to be saying, oh, I love you, Lord, thank you, Jesus. But, but just be focused on this is time for you. You want to receive it in you. You want to take it in you. You want him to come and fill you with the Holy Spirit so that you can be empowered then to go and give it away next week. How many want to heal somebody next week? Leave your hand up for a moment. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to right now set up divine appointments for all of these whose hands are raised. And we're saying, Lord, if you set it up, if you lead me to a person who's got shoulder pain, back pain, headache pain, this pain, that pain, the other pain, or whatever's wrong with them, we're going to go for it in the name of Jesus. We're going to just swallow hard and say, no, I'm going to go for it because God set up that appointment that I asked him to do. And then as you pray, just a simple prayer, come Holy Spirit, come and heal my friend. I tell the pain to go in Jesus' name. This healing belongs to them because of what Jesus did at the whipping post and on the cross. Receive your healing. And then you've got to say something very, very important to them. Are you ready for this? Now check yourself. Tell me if there's any difference. If you don't do that, you'll miss three quarters of them. But when you say, okay, check yourself, how is it? Uh, that's, that's what happened with David right here. He said, how is it? And he says, well, it's, it's better. I think maybe 40% better. I said, that's great. You know what that tells me? None of us can heal anybody, not even 1%, let alone 40. This is God at work. Be encouraged. He's doing it. And he's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, something's going on. Okay. It encourages everybody, especially you if you've never done it before. So you pray again. What is it now? 60%. What is it now? 100%. Hallelujah. And it will make your day. And this is how we're going to take those mountains by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, the love of God being demonstrated in your little old life. Isn't that wonderful? There is a time to take in, and then there's a time to give it out. One last verse, John 7, 37, and 38. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. If you believe in me, come and drink, for the scriptures declare that rivers of living water will flow out from you. Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. I want you to picture your inner being right here. Out of your innermost being, out of your belly, it says in the King James. Out of the inner you, there is going to flow a river of living water. And you know what I love about that? Most often you can feel it. Once you kind of tune in. Some people are really touchy-feely, sensitive people. They, they feel it right away. Like Carol's always been like that. Woo, I feel that, you know. Whereas I'm like, what, what? You know? <laughs> you know, I had to just... Really, slow down, stop analyzing, focus on one thing at a time here. What is God doing? And, and okay, I feel that, yeah, yeah. And it just took a little longer to get in touch with it. 
But when you get in touch with that flow of the anointing, I'm telling you, it's encouraging for you. Jesus said, out of your inner being, there will flow a river of living water, a river that brings life and healing and blessing to the people. This is the Holy Spirit coming mightily upon you. And, I, and he brings his gifts, and some of you will prophesy, and some of you will speak in tongues and, 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 and have great works of faith and on and on, all the, all the nine gifts of the Spirit that's talked about in 1 Corinthians 14. That is all what we want to see. But I'm telling you, it's a relationship with a person who's called God, the Holy Spirit. How many want more of him? There's a come unto me side to it, and then there's a go ye side to it. And tonight it's like come unto me. And he said that. I looked up a bunch of scriptures about come unto me, and it was amazing. Um, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Isn't that good? Matthew 19, 